I'm thinking again about uh, verticality and toughness and what the experience of being a kind of land-bound mammal living at the bottom of a gravity well feels like and how that sense of being which informs our consciousness completely I would imagine and all our unconscious processing how that um, that organization of sensory experience that comes with being a land-bound mammal living at the bottom of the gravity well uh, might in turn inform our understandings of abstract concepts. And I'm thinking again about this up, as I say, and I've spoken before about that. Uh, one of the first things that is quite interesting about that is that uh, in contrast to kind of outness or horizontal dimension extension, there's only one up. I'm on this uh, disused railway. Actually, I walk up here. But I'm on a disused railway line right now, the Salt Line, in Sandbach, in Cheshire. Uh, and uh, well, there are, there are two very clear um, horizon points on, on, on this line. But over here, of course, when I'm going to come out into this field where the sheep are, see if I can get that. There's an infinity of those points really marking the horizon. You know, I could take myself off for a walk in near those directions. And uh, and if I think about it, I just like ignore what I know about the world and just take the evidence of my senses literally, if you like. I could be um, quite literally living at the bottom of a sitting, standing at the bottom of a kind of funnel-shaped container with this green stuff around the bottom fading into this blue stuff and just kind of opening out at the top um, with the green stuff coming closer and closer to me as it, as it approaches until it kind of becomes uh, this sort of contentless, infinitely singular point where I'm standing. I, mean, I know that's not what it really is, whatever that means, but um, I think there's a way of understanding this the phenomenal experience that I'm having is kind of uh, equivalent to that. But in terms of what I'm talking about, the, 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 uh, this dimension, this horizontal dimension, has got this infinity of points, ultimately terminating in this circle of the horizon. But that contrasts with the vertical dimension, of which there is only one. I'll just do that so I can see what that one looks like. Just this big sky, really. And wherever I walk, I don't get any closer. I don't travel in that direction. It's almost as if that point above my head just kind of walks, comes with me. Um, and it's constantly just there, really, above me. So this is sort of up. There's only one up, I suppose, if I'm saying with that. And that seems to be a significant entailment of uh, a kind of naive phenomenal experience. Uh, which, which, you know, I don't know, maybe has some resonance to um, metaphorical understanding. The other thing about this up, and here's a great example because I'm near some trees. If I look up where the trees are, I feel like I can catch you from the camera. If it's working or not. Uh, yeah, sort of. If I look up where the trees are, the trees kind of come in from the outside of my vision, the periphery of my vision. They kind of enter from the dark spaces behind my head, something. And then um, seem to point towards the centre of my upward, of my looking up. So the trees seem to be growing towards that point directly above my head. And again, as I move forward, you know, the, the trees kind of continue to point to that space above my head. This isn't a great set of trees. But in a, in a clearing in a forest, if you look up, what you see is a ring of trees with the trunks all from the branches all kind of pointing inward and upwards towards this thing with a point, this uh, ongoing, omnipresent uh, up dimension, singular up dimension. 
that seems pretty significant. Um, but what that's suggesting to me is um, is the upness in terms of its scale or its size or its ontology in this in the sense that I'm talking about now has a kind of contradictory paradoxical quality. Because certainly when I was standing over there near where the sheep were and there was no trees above my head, there was a sense that up was huge. You know, it was just big sky just kind of opened out with one big up um, dimension. There's this kind of upward shaped funnel going up with my uh, my sense of being at the uh, at the um, is it the azimuth? I don't know. Whatever it is, the bottom of the the bottom of that funnel. So that's that one sense. But when there are trees around, and I'm looking up, I have the opposite kind of uh, sensation, or um, a contradictory but uh, but uh, possibly complementary sensation. That up is a is a narrowing, and it is a kind of perspectival narrowing to a singular point, which is always there. I don't know what that means, again. I mean, the only um, kind of reference point I have for that kind of thinking, and this is not a good reference point, I acknowledge that completely, is W.B. Yeats, again, who I keep coming back to when I talk about openness. Um, he talks about it in that, uh, in that poem, Second Coming, turning and turning and the widening uh, gyre, the falcon, and I hear the falconer begins like that. Um, when he talks about things going up and things going down and falling apart. But my, I have very little understanding of this actually, but I think in some of his writing, because W.B. Yeats was something of a mystic, if I understand it. Um, in some of his writing, he, he, uh, he developed this kind of model, which of the, the universe, I guess, which was um, a little bit like two, uh, two funnels one pointing upwards and one pointing downwards. Uh, and I think this term gyre that he uses in that poem, turning and turning in the widening gyre, is this sense that there being an upward funnel leading to an infinitely large uh, conceptual uh, sense of, of, of the ultimate up. Turning and turning, that's the, that's the gyre that's widening in, the, um, in that poem, I think. But as I say, I think he also had this uh, inverted funnel in his uh, kind of cosmology, which narrowed to a point. But I have to say, I've got no idea how that would work. And I will find out. I think actually Teilhard de Chardin also has that. But again, I, I haven't done the research. But I get the sense that he's also talking about this cone-like or inverted funnel-like um, uh, model. For for some aspects of that uh, cosmology, psychology, whatever that would be, philosophy, I guess. Anyway, that's, that's the kind of phenomenological experience that I'm having, which I know is the nearest reference points I can get to it. But in terms of the vertical dimension, to the extent that we use verticality as uh, a metaphorical schema to organize and uh, categorize and evaluate different forms of knowing, then it may be that this uh, entailment, this phenomenologically based entailment to do with up being simultaneously infinitely wide and infinitely narrow, being simultaneously the, the open end of the funnel which terminates in our being, but also the, uh, the convergent acne uh, through which all experience converges. Um, maybe there's some kind of uh, some kind of application for that.